Oh, I see. Okay, uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, doctor. Okay, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Okay, okay. all right. Uh, okay, it's a bit dark here. Okay. So before we start, uh, can you? I hope you can turn on your video, so I don't, I don't like to talk to screen without anybody silly responding. Sounds not good. <laughs> don't worry, it won't, it won't, it won't take two hours. <laughs> All right? Okay. Uh, so at least I know you are there. Uh, actually, I'm in the office. Can can I turn off my camera? <laughs> okay. I mean, you 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 can you can mute. No worries. Bos marah lah tu. Tapi bos marah ke? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So um, uh, we are supposed to have uh, more than this, but no worries. But it seems like uh, it is not really mandatory, but it is actually uh, good for you to join this session so that we can give you some clear overview about the program. Okay, you need to know what is it all about, right? Okay, so before we start, um, uh, Anybody knows me before this, except for one or two maybe? Have we met before? No. Tak ada eh? Tak ada. Okay, so that means that, that's good. Okay, all right, uh, I'll share some information, okay, to you on the program. Okay, hang on eh. Okay, can you see the slides? Yes, doctor. Can eh? Can. Okay, so okay, right. Okay, so anyway, um, first of all, uh, congratulations, eh? Congratulations for being accepted as the uh, candidate for our Master of Project Management Program. All right, so of, of uh, quite a bit about what almost uh, almost reaching 200 applicants, right? Only about uh, 50 of you being uh, selected and finalized lah, because that is our, our lim we have limited numbers of students or, or seats, okay, for each intake. So, so far, uh, we have offered to about 50 of you, all right? And from this 50 today, I have what 50% discount of from the 50 uh, successful uh, applicants. All right, no worries. We we'll still continue. Okay, right. Uh, how many of you are actually uh, a graduate of University of Malaya? Can I can I hear something? Some feedback from you? Anyone? Our own alumni from what whichever program? No one? Uh, me, me, from Mechanical Engineering. Mechanical Engineering. Who's, who, what, what's your name, sorry? Uh, Dominic. Dominic. Yep. All right, Dominic. Yeah. So only one of you, right? Just one candidate from Mechanical. Yes, so. Okay, no worries. Right, okay. So I would like to ask you in the first place, what makes you apply to this particular program? Um, actually, just... I graduated on 2016, uh -huh. and then after that, I was working in a project management line. So uh -huh. I thought of, thought of want to learn more on theoretical of this master, uh, masters in project management. So that's why I applied here. Right. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? What What makes you choose this particular program? Anybody would like to share some uh, views? Or thoughts? Can I say something? Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 please. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I had uh, uh, some experience uh, doing physical projects okay. uh, during my time in Ministry of Defense. Right. And I have had uh, courses. Uh, I have attended courses uh, both uh, from government and private about project management. Okay. Uh, so I was uh, very interested uh, to pursue uh, the course. 
and uh, I am very honored uh, to have the accepted into this course and this faculty. And um, yes, I wish uh, I wish to know more. Hence, I believe this course can can uh, I mean widen my view and hopefully deepen my knowledge about management. Thank you, Dr. Okay. So, so you were from, you were, right? You were from yes, MINDEF? I, yes, I was from MINDEF okay. back in 2013 to 2018. 13 to 18? Yes. Sir. Right, so you, I have never met you before, right? Uh, oh, did I did I did I interview you? <laughs> I believe so, Doctor. <laughs> you were one of the panel. <laughs> I was I was one of the panel interviewing you. <laughs> yes. Uh... It's like oh, okay, okay. Uh, I cannot remember your face uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Okay, anybody else? One, one or two more feedbacks? <laughs> It's quite dark. Okay, anybody would like to say anything uh, before I start uh, mumbling here? No one, eh? Okay, no one, no worries, right. Okay, so welcome again, okay, to the University of Malaya. So you have been uh, uh, accepted to into the university. You know that uh, our university is now in uh, 59th rank in the world, right? on this uh, QS ranking, right? So we were at number 87 in 2019 and twin, uh, number 70 in 2020 and for 2021, we are at 59. So what does this mean? It means that uh, with all the efforts and the hard work of everybody, right? In the program or in the university, we are the one who is actually, uh, who are actually contributing Okay, to this uh, kind of achievement, right? So when you are in here, you are part of us, right? When you're part of us, your oh. efforts, your contributions are actually counted as well, okay? So let's say we are going to be uh, number 50, for example, in 2022, right? So it is partly because of your contribution as well, right? So be proud of it, right? Okay. All right, so again, uh, thank you very much lah, for, for, for uh, applying and for as well as, well as uh, congratulations for being accepted. All right, so and for your information as well, our Masters of Project Management is ranked uh, number eight in the Far East Asia, right, for the innovation and project management category, right? So number eight is actually quite high achievement for us, right? Right, so you can see now, correct, where are we, right? That is the first uh, program in Malaysia, ranked at number eight, and we are still number eight for the past two years, right? And of course, on top of us is actually all those uh, very prominent universities, right? Fudan University, Tsinghua University, all right? Seoul National University, and so on and so on, right? So we are number eight, and we are also part of it, and partly, of course, thanks to the students as well, all right? Not only the staff, the students are actually the one who uh, contributed to this kind of uh, achievement. Okay, so now some background of uh, who we are, what we are doing and everything. Okay, so the program actually established since 2009, right? And the uh, uh, background work actually started since 2007 when I was there. I was part of the team who actually uh, initiated and drafted the paperwork. Right? Paperwork takes about two years to be approved, of course, all sort of levels, right? And our first intake started in 2010. Right, so it's already uh, 10, year, 10 year now, lah, right? We are already 10 years and Alhamdulillah, and we are still uh, doing good, all right? Okay, um, this one, okay, objective, of course, we want to produce a better or good project manager in the future in terms of, in terms of uh, achievement, understandings, right? And bear in mind that this is not a professional program, all right? When I said not professional program, is that uh, when you graduate, you are not going to be accepted into any professional body uh, for free, whatever, lah, right? You have to apply to their certification, but we will provide you the, the baseline, okay? The basic understanding, the understanding, the knowledge, right? To streamline to the 
whatever industry that you are in later on. Okay. All right. So I know that you are all coming from all sort of backgrounds, all sort of projects, right? So I know some may be coming from the civil or chemical engineering or construction background, okay? Which uh, majority, right? I think so, right? This particular uh, group of students, majority, quite a number of you are actually coming from engineering and construction background, right? And some are actually coming from manufacturing, right? And some may be coming from other projects, right? IT projects, okay, business projects, whatever projects, and maybe one or two, right? This is quite a small number of you coming from any scientific projects, right? Researchers, scientists, we do have this uh, background previously as well, right? Scientists, we do have few scientists actually doing project management, right? Okay, so this is some uh, data on our enrollments and our graduates, right? You will see ups and downs, right? Not necessarily the uh, downs are actually not so good, but it depends on the students, right? Some may defer the, the, the program, some may have to take a longer period to complete, right? Bear in mind that this is not um, so-called uh, part-time mode, right? We are actually in a full-time mode, but classes are actually offered as part-time. So our program is still called full-time program because we are at the University of Malaya, we are not allowed to offer any kind of part-time program because we are University of Malaya and we are research university so-called, right? That is our, our restrictions a bit, but implementation-wise, we are actually offering it as a part-time basis. Right, so most students or most candidates actually ask whether this is a part-time or full-time program. Yes, it is a full-time program, but okay, there's always but that, as you can see, right, our our I'll show you afterwards uh, our timetable and everything. We will start classes only after six p.m. if it's uh, during weekdays, right? And we may finish later in the night. All right, okay, right. Numbers actually, our capacity we can take up a maximum up to forty normally. That is our maximum. And uh, usually we'll get 30 or 30 something. Uh, that is a quite good number for us. And sometimes we only take about 20, depending on the applications. All right. Okay. Right. The, this is the uh, structure of the faculty. Right. The, this program is parked under the faculty of built environment. All right. And there was also, there was also usually uh, misunderstandings of the programs. Right. We are not offering a construction project management program, right? The program that you are going to enroll or you are you already enrolled with is actually Masters of Project Management, which is a generic program, right? That's why you can see uh, applicants coming from all sort of industries, all sort of backgrounds, right? Remember that previous slide, I have at least major, majority four groups of projects. So there you are actually coming from all sort of background, right? Right, although that uh, by nature, the Faculty of Built Environment is a construction-based faculty, but the program is not, right? I hope you get this clearly, right? We are not construction project management program, all right? Okay, so the faculty is headed by our new dean. Okay, the new dean has recently been appointed about one month, almost uh, one month ago, right? We have a new dean, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Survey Anwar Elias. His background is actually real estate, right? And we have three uh, deputy deans. Okay, first one is uh, Associate Professor Dr. Savey Yasmin. Uh, he, she is in charge of undergraduates, where you, you will not be seeing her, right? And we have Professor Dr. Savey Azlan, right? Who is actually uh, in charge of the postgraduate. So any postgraduate matters, we'll go back to him first before uh, referring to the dean, right? And we have, okay, the uh, Deputy Dean of Research and Development has just uh, ended his tenure yesterday, so today we have no uh, official appointment of new Deputy Dean of Research, but previously, or as of yesterday, he's the one, I have since Professor Dr. Nazli, right? He is from uh, the uh, architectural department, but he is, his area is actually um, uh, architectural engineering, noise, noise, whatever sound, right? And in the faculty, we have five departments, okay? We have architecture, all right, Dr. Norafida, and we have a uh, building surveying, all uh, right? We have Dr. Farid, and it's me there, right, for quantity surveying. My background is actually quantity surveying, but I specialize in project management. Okay, we have real estate, okay, Dr. Hasniati, and we have urban planning, okay, urban region, we have Dr. Go, right? For administrative purposes, we have two um, assistant registrars, okay, uh, actually, it's supposed to be the other color, right? Uh, Puan 
Fakhretul Azhan is actually in charge of undergraduate and we have J. Muhammad, right, for postgraduate. So any matters regarding postgraduates, you guys actually will be uh, talking to him first. He is the first layer of any administrative issues, right, besides the program coordinator or besides me, all right? Okay, so postgraduate structure, okay, we have the dean as, as the head and we have, of course, uh, Professor Azlan who is in charge of postgraduate. And for this, Masters of Project Man Management, okay, we are very special. We have two coordinators, right? First one is Dr. Zul, who is uh, unable to join us today. He is on medical leave. He just broke his arm, right? He's on MC for, for four months already now, All right? So he's unable to join us. And we have just now, you met okay, Dr. Angeline, okay, or, or her name is actually Dr. Uh, Lu Xiaochuing, but we call her Angeline, lah, eh? So she is the one who is actually administering the program, okay, all these applications, right? She's the one who's doing it, right? And other than that, we have uh, other coordinators, right? We have Dr. Aino, say, uh, in charge of all uh, research program, right? Dr. Shirley for Masters of Facilities Management, and we have Dr. Zairul, uh, Masters of Real Estate, and we have uh, Dr. Helena for Masters of Architecture, right? And this is the backbone of the program, all right? We have just now, okay, Encik uh, Muhammad, and we have our administrative clerk, it's actually Puan Nurizan. Okay. Oops, right. Okay, some uh, overview of who we are, okay, in the department, right? So uh, that's me, okay. Uh, I, I, I am an alumni of UM as well. Okay, I graduated quite some time ago. And then, then after that, I work outside for about a couple of years in different industries. So I, I've got some experience in building. Uh, I've got experience in highways, uh, bridges, okay, for civil engineering. And I've got experience in oil and gas as well. Okay. And uh, that is my specialty. Okay. I am in project management. And my PhD is in, of course, project management, uh, focusing on risk. Okay. We have uh, Sveid Dr. Zol. Okay. Who, he graduated with a PhD from Cambridge. For that, yeah, he's also a QS, no worries, we are in the QS department, right? He is your coordinator one, and he will be teaching you most of the time, okay? And we have coordinator two, right, Dr. Angeline, okay? Uh, she is a loyal team member from UM, right? She graduated from UM, UM, and UM, right? So don't mess with her, she knows everything in UM. Okay, all right, so we have our coordinator for undergraduate, bachelor, Kesevaya Imran. All right, and before that, and we have also Professor Hamza. Professor Hamza is actually a retired professor. Now we are, we have appointed him actually as an honorary professor within the department. Okay, he is the one who is actually championing project management. All right, and um, he is now with us for two years already as an honorary pro professor. Okay, before that, he was the dean, he was the deputy dean, uh, he was the deputy vice chancellor, and he was also the uh, president of IUMW. Okay, the UM's uh, private university. Okay, and we have next one, uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Hafiz. All right, his uh, specialty is in IT. So anything IT, right, IT research, IT in construction, can, you can refer to him. Okay, and we have uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Faisal. All right, he's uh, he's not really teaching us, lah, right? He's not, he's not teaching uh, project management, but his background is actually in life cycle course, right? And also IT, right? And we have Associate Professor Dr. Suhaimi. Okay, Dr. Suhaimi's background is in uh, law, okay, construction law, business law, right? And we have also Associate Professor Dr. Nohanim. Okay, Dr. Nohanim's uh, uh, areas of spe specialization is in project management, right? So you will be meeting her as well for your principles of project management. Right. Okay, we have Dr. Umi. Okay, Dr. Umi is a QS, purely a QS, and area is actually on contracts, procurement. All right. Remember that uh, you're going to do research, whatever, we will assign you to the dedicated uh, lecturers as a supervisor. Right. Uh, next one is actually Dr. Osman. Dr. Osman specializes in uh, knowledge management. Okay, uh, we have Dr. Komei. Komei specializes in uh, delays, project delays. Okay, Dr. Mahanim specializes in uh, construction, technology, buildings, okay, supply chain, right? Uh, and we have Dr. Shuhada. Okay, Dr. Shuhada spe specializes in IT as well, okay, IT projects. Uh, Dr. Madia specializes in IT and also facilities, right? And uh, last one, uh, Puan Mazna, Madam Mazna is actually our one of our most senior uh, 
uh, lecturer in the in the in the in the faculty, right? She specializes in general project management, behavior, organization, uh, right? Human resource. Okay, so in uh, the department itself, right? These are our areas of specialization, areas of expertise. So if you're thinking to do your project later on, okay, in any kind of areas of specialization, these are the options that we can go, right? Uh, later on, you can choose. Okay, you, you have ample of time to choose, right? And then if it's not here, then we will try to assign to the dedicated supervisor later on, okay? All right, some um, uh, views from our alumni, right? We have alumni so, since 2010, okay, 2012 onwards. Okay, uh, our alumni is actually coming from also background. Okay, uh, if you're from Indef, eh, Salahuddin, you should know her like and cycle. All right, she's from uh, the development of what, what sort of thing, eh? Lieutenant Colonel Zaykel, right? So, was our alumni. Okay, she graduated with MPM later on. She's an architect by, by, by profession. All right, uh -huh. okay, and we have uh, Jamila who is now with uh, Adian Automotive, a program manager. Right, she is one of the best uh, students previously, right? And uh, upon graduation, she she received uh, an increment salary. Okay, when, when she moved company, about forty five percent difference of salary because of having a master's in project management. That was what she said to me, right? She is now with Adian Automotive in Melaka. Okay, supplying uh, uh, components to Honda Malaysia. Okay, and we have uh, Krishna. Okay, Krishna Vini is now with uh, currently with uh, China State Construction Engineering. She's a she's a senior manager. Okay, we also have uh, Shalani. Shalani is now with Frost and Sullivan. Okay, as an industry analyst, right? She did uh, research on on uh, healthcare industry previously, and with that uh, research, she joined Frost and Sullivan. Okay, and we have Diane. Diane was uh, with another university when she graduated with a uh, master's. Uh, she joined uh, Harold Ward University of Malaysia, lah, right? Uh, Aisha, all this while with Public Mutual, uh, right? Uh, and we have Patrick. Patrick, uh, previously, right? I think I'm not so sure where he is now. He was with uh, Shell Malaysia and before, after that with uh, uh, Shell uh, EP Asia Pacific. And uh, I don't know where, where is he now, lah, right? He has completed his PhD, right? So his aim, if you see that, that statement is actually, uh, that statement makes him make his PhD. So he has uh, completed his PhD. Okay, and we have uh, Shazwan. Okay, Shazwan was our alumni as well from undergraduate. And he's now uh, with the uh, group strategic, uh, and, uh, strategic and performance management UDA. Previously was just an executive and a contract executive and after graduation being promoted and promoted. And he's now heading a lot of things, right? Uh, Surendran worked with uh, Bosted Oil and Gas, right? uh, quite lost contact with him. Uh, Lokman from Pakistan, uh, he's actively been contacting me for certain projects as well. Okay, and we have uh, Saiful. Saiful previously worked with uh, the Nuclear Power Corporation, a company that was actually now being uh, shut down by the government because the uh, government was not keen to, to proceed with the uh, nuclear power plant in Malaysia. All right, and we have Nashwan, who is now uh, in Yemen, right, and involved with all sort of uh, NGOs work in Yemen, right, all sort of uh, relief work over there. Okay, we have Sundus, uh, currently a lecturer in, in Iraq, all right, and we have also, okay, this was uh, the previous batches who recently graduated. Okay, uh, Zhou Jun, Zhou Jun is Neil, we call him Neil, okay, now he's in Beijing work with the, um, I, I'm, I don't know, I forgot the company. Okay, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, Zhu Guilin or Gabby, right? Well, Gabby was from Wuhan, if you know, right? She's from Wuhan, no, she's from Wuhan and she was uh, being locked down during the pandemic as well, but she managed to graduate with a distinction, right? Uh, distinction, right? Very good research on, on contractors in Wuhan. Okay, uh, this is George. George is currently in KL, working with a company, China, China company in KL. Right, okay, now, this is about the program structure. Um, you want to, okay, so I, I leave it to Dr. Angeline to explain about the program structure. All right, and I'll join you afterwards.
Um, uh, so I'll continue with the program structure. Oh, sorry for the. I think you can't see me at all. Uh, but anyway, um, the program structure is very important. So you need to get to know the program structure first, right? And here we have a total of 43 credits that you have to fulfill. Okay. 43 credits in one and a half years, that will be three full semesters. Okay, even though that we say that uh, you have to complete it within three full semesters, but in actual fact, you can um, prolong it to four semesters, uh, that is two years, but you still graduate with those uh, who completed within uh, three full semesters. So meaning to say you can either complete it within one and a half years or two years, but you will uh, have your convocation, uh, the graduation day together. So it's up to you. If you are very, um, how to say, you have uh, the, the time and the capacity to do it, you can complete it within three full semesters. If not, you can do it within four semesters. But you can uh, discuss with me or if uh, whoever that's the coordinator regarding the uh, taking up the subjects and so on, right? Now, here we have uh, three full semesters and in each semester you'll be taking like about uh, four subjects, right? Uh, for semesters one, uh, we already uh, scheduled, uh, you have to take up uh, research methodology for project management. So this is the, the course that you must take before you take up your research project one, okay? And then you will have to take up your um, BQB 704, that's principles of project management. And then uh, BQB 7005, Project Management Professional Development 1. And BQB 7006, uh, Organizational and Strategic Management for Projects. Uh, this you have to take, uh, you have to uh, register in the coming semester. You have to register for uh, these four subjects. Let's say if you uh, would like to uh, take any of the subject later on, then uh, for example, if you can't manage to take four subjects within this semester, you might want to leave uh, BQB 706, for example. You want to leave it for the next time, then you will have to wait until the following year uh, within that particular semester. Uh, you don't have to uh, take picture or anything because I will upload this. Uh, we, I will also share with you where you can get all this information, right? Uh, so uh, the structure is actually 1.5 years of duration. So the in second semester, you have to take uh, research project one, that is BQB 702, uh, integrated project, uh, BQB 706, uh, 7007, um, project management professional development two, 7008, and one elective subject. Okay, uh, elective subject, you can choose uh, among uh, four subjects, but we will always ask beforehand. Like for example, the following semesters, uh, before the following semesters, uh, the coordinator, for example, uh, I, I myself, I will be asking everyone through WhatsApp group, uh, checking whether uh, the interest is towards uh, which elective subject, then we'll offer that particular subject. Okay, then uh, in semester three, uh, the third semester, um, which is semester one of the following year, you have to take uh, BQB 703, Research Project 2, BQB 709, Value and Risk Management for Projects, BQB 7010, Project Investment and Finance, and one elective subject. So that mm -hmm. will uh, give you a total of 43 credits uh, that's to be taken within 1.5 years. Okay. So here are the the electives offered. So there are, you have to take, actually you have to take up only two electives in the whole duration of your MPM program. So the first uh, elective will be health and safety management. Second elective we offer will be legal studies for project management. And uh, the third elective will be assets and facilities management. And the fourth one will be IT management for projects. Right. So in actual fact, you can also get all this information from our website, fbe.um.edu.my. So you can actually go to
go to this fbe.um.edu.my. Just scroll to the bottom and you can get the handbook here. Okay. This is our handbook. This is our handbook. Okay. So the e-handbook is on is in the website. So if you scroll to page 71 here, you can actually get the the structure that I've mentioned just now. Okay, so you can refer there. All right now. Okay, coming back. Um, let me share with you the coming semester. What do you have to do? Because the registration will start um, on the. Yeah. Uh, registration, online registration will start on uh, 5th October, 12th noon. So these are the subjects that you have to take. You just have to refer to the green portion. The green ones will be the subjects you have to take up for semester one. Okay. Uh, so the classes will be held after working hour. So for example, um, the coming semester, the schedule has been fixed. Tuesday, 6 to 9 for principles project management. Thursday, 6 to 9 for research methodology for project management. And Friday, 6 to 9 for project management professional development one. And on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 for organizational and strategic management for projects. So these are actually the scheduled, uh, the scheduled subjects that you can take up, right? Uh, you can contact me if you are unsure, okay, what uh, subjects to take or any uh, inquiries or any queries regarding the uh, registration of the subjects. Okay, these are the grades, the grading. So our passing mark is actually 60, 65. So 65 will be B. If you get B mine, you will have to repeat the subject. So B will be 65, 69. B plus 70 to 74. MI will be 75 to 79. And A will be 80 to 100. So if you maintain a CGPA of 3.7 and above for three, if you completed, if you completed your MPM within two years, within two years, for with a CGPA of three point seven and above, you will get a Ustermalang or distinction. Okay, first class graduate, right? But that is within two years. You must complete it within two years, four semesters. Then you'll be able to uh, be conferred a uh, distinction, first class, right? So these are the lectures we'll be teaching you in the coming semester. So BQB 1001 is research methodology for project management. Uh, you'll be taught on the scientific pro research problem, uh, how to carry out research, how to collect data, how to analyze, and so on and so forth. It's 100% coursework, there's no exam, and it'll be taught by Dr. Mahanim Hanit. Okay. And the next subject will be BQB 704, Principles of Project Management, will be taught by Associate Professor Dr. Nohanim Zakaria. Mm -hmm. And uh, she'll be teaching you the fundamentals of project management. This subject, there will be a 40% final exam and 60% of uh, coursework. Right, um, mm -hmm. Next, uh, next will be BQB 0005, Project Management Professional Development 1. Uh, this will be taught by Surveyor Dr. Zuklifi Kuzamad. Um, he'll be teaching you based on the PM Bok. If, if you know PM Bok, uh, I'm sure you know PM Bok. And these are the five areas, five out of the 10 areas, knowledge area will be covered within this subject. So again, this will have a 40% final exam and 60% coursework. And the final subject will be BQB 706 for your semester one. It will be taught by Professor Dr. Surveyor Technologies Abdul Hadi Al-Nawawi. Uh, 
he'll be teaching you on the how to formulate uh, corporate decisions, right? And again, this is the this will have a 40% final exam and 60% coursework. And so there's three subjects with like final exam, only one full coursework, which is the research methodology. So you must take up the research methodology before you can take your research project one, right? And so in semester two, after you've completed your research project, um, research methodology for project management, you will have to take up this uh, research project one. And because the coordinator is Dr. No Shohada Zainon. For this particular subject, you have to choose a research problem that you want to look at. Uh, perhaps it's uh, problems within your the company that you're working for. It will be 100% coursework and supervised by a lecturer. So just now, Dr. Saipo mentioned uh, the names of the people, the people will be teaching you, right? Um, the staff of the department. Uh, so there'll be one designated lecturer who'll be supervising you for your research. Okay, the prerequisite is uh, BQB 7001. And there's no specific uh, timetable for this research project. It all depends on your own appointment with the particular supervisor. So you have to make uh, uh, appointments before meeting your supervisor to discuss. There's no classes. And then uh, semester two, you'll be also, um, you have to take, register for BQB 7007 integrated project. It'll be taught by survey Dr. Saipo Bari of the Karim. He'll be supervising you on this 100% coursework subject. You'll be given a project to uh, research on it and then you present to the, the class. Uh, it'll be a group work. It'll be a group work. So there's no exam. And BQB 7008, uh, Project Management <laughs> Professional Development 2, it'll be taught by survey Dr. Zulkifli Abdul Samad. Uh, this will cover the second half of the PM Bok, which is the other five of the 10 knowledge area in PM Bok. Because in semester one, you take a project management professional development one, and now you have to take a project management development professional development two. Uh, that will cover the total of the whole 10 areas, knowledge areas in PM Bok. And uh, in semester three, so the final semester, you'll be taking research project two. Again, the coordinator will be Dr. No Shohada. She'll be uh, giving you the format uh, on how to uh, how to do your thesis and uh, final hard bound of your thesis. So it, again, it's hundred percent coursework. You continue with your the balance of your chapters under the supervision of the similar. Uh, lecturer who has been supervisor who is supervising you for research project one, and uh, and also you have to register for BQB seven zero zero nine value and risk management, be taught by Sylvia Dr. Saipo. Uh, this will have a final exam forty percent, uh, and uh, it will cover about the general theories of value and risk management using a a book a reference book written by Dr. Sylvia Saipo. And uh, uh, the other subject will be BQB 7010, Project Investment and Finance. It will be uh, taught by Sylvia Dr. Zulkifli Abdul Samad. He will be teaching you uh, the project finance, project cost, entrepreneurial uh, project management. So again, this is also, uh, there will be a 40% of final exam for this uh, subject and 60% coursework. And these are the elect yes. So here, um, here we have the electives. So these electives, there's four electives. You can, according to the program structure, you can actually register for them at your second semester or your third semester. So the first elective is BQB 7011, Health and Safety Management. It'll be taught by, uh, LAR Zarul Hardy as well. He'll be teaching you on based on OSHA, based on MFA, 
So uh, this safety management and then there'll be a final exam as well with the coursework. And another elective will be BKB7012, Legal Studies for Project Management. It be taught by no, it be taught by depending on the lectures. Uh, the coordinator will be Associate Professor Sabir Dr. Mohammad Swami Mohammad Danuri. Uh, it, the module will cover the legal issues. Uh, during the project life cycle. Okay. Uh, again, there'll be 60% uh, coursework and 40% of final exam. Next will be the, the other elective will be BQP 7013, Assets and Facilities Management. It'll be taught by Dr. Nick Elena Maida. Uh, we'll be teaching you regarding facilities management strategies. And it, this will, again, encompass 60% of coursework and also 40% of final exam. Okay, and uh, BQB 7014, IT management for projects is another elective. Uh, it's taught by Dr. Leon Munchak, PMP. Uh, he'll be teaching you the IT tools and techniques uh, to manage a project. And again, this uh, there'll be a 40% final exam and also 60% of coursework. Okay, so those are all the electives that we have for you, the four electives, right? And then uh, now, uh, if you can look at this, we'll just show you some pictures of the events of what we have done by your alumni, uh, by our graduates, right? So these are some of the pictures of uh, how the, the classes are handled. These are the face-to-face -face classes. And also this one is during the exam. Okay. And uh, sometimes we'll also engage some external parties, uh, practitioners to come in to give us some talk. Uh, so this is a talk by KLCC Projects, uh, Sinjar Ber Berhard, coming a project manager. And this is a talk by MRT Corp on project risk management, the MRT experience. And it's a talk by Professor Rahina Ibrahim PM, on value management for design research transformation. And this is convocation yeah. day for 2017. These are all Not our yet. graduates. And convocation day 2018. So the scroll is uh, yellow in color for our program. And uh, this is our knowledge sharing session by our uh, MSc project management candidate on her research outcome. Uh, to the members of IVMM, Institute of Value Management Malaysia at Machu Alamena. Her earlier session was with the VM section for EPU of Prime Minister's Department. And this is a special briefing on getting PMI accreditation. So this is actually uh, what we are going towards at the moment for our Masters of Project Management program. We will be, uh, we are in on the way on uh, acquiring this uh, PMI accreditation. So once we have obtained the PMI accreditation, uh, all, our, uh, all, all our graduates will be able to get a, a waiver on the hours of professional experience in order to sit for the PMP or uh, obtaining the PMP uh, professional certificate. And this is a special talk on railway project. And this is integrated project, which is one of the subjects that you have to take. It's a final presentation for the East Coast Railway Link project in 2017. Again, these are some of the feasibility study done by the, the students. Mm. The studies, uh, these are all the things included uh, in the feasibility study of the integrated project. You need to carry out case studies comparison. You need to identify the project constraints using pastel analysis. You need to do analysis and scenario planning for ECRL, analysis and aligning for the strategy, technology options, project costing, funding, procurement strategy, contract, uh, project management, project organizations. These are things you have to cover in this uh, integrated project. And this is also um, another talk. It's an integrated project seminar. 
2018 Managing Nuclear plant, Power Plant Project. This, are the, this is a topic for the integrated project in 2018, the Nuclear Power Plant Project. So this is a proposed uh, generation nuclear power plant model. And these are some of the presentations made during the uh, submission of the integrated project. So we will invite all the panels from uh, the industries as well as the experts from academia to comment on your work. And these are some of the posters done by the, the students who have uh, taken up the integrated project 2018. So all these are the posters project done by the uh, MPM graduates. So these are the content of the integrated project for managing nuclear power plants. So they have part A, case studies. So they have to study the similar case studies from other countries. And then uh, part B, the NPP project, the nuclear power plant project. They will identify the issues, the risks involved and the procurement strategies for that particular project. And part C, there's an alternative project management framework and part D, talent development. Okay, this is a value management workshop simulation conducted by two facilitators from the Economic Planning Unit, EPU, Ministry of Economic Affairs Malaysia. Once they have completed the, uh, the project, normally they will compile it into a booklet where you can refer. Value and risk management in 2018, the nuclear power plant, they also did a, a report. So these are a few of the reports done by the candidates. And in 2019, they are doing another project, which is shipbuilding. So managing shipbuilding projects, so they have visited, visited the, the shipbuilding the, at uh, Lumut. So they've invited the panels to come over to comment again to create on the, um, the integrated project done on shipbuilding. And this is the risk analysis for project managers in 2019. Uh, it was uh, conducted by uh, uh, registered risk professional risk manager. And in 2020, uh, the earlier this year, in 11 July 2020, the integrated project was on commercial aviation projects. Okay. This is our first full online presentation because it's uh, during the MCO, during the COVID-19 lockdown. Even though um, it was uh, under the COVID and the MCO, uh, we are still able to complete all the work. Um, I can't see it here, but yeah, these are some of the Zoom meetings that we had with all the the students, right? And each group they will present and they'll be created by the professional. And also some social activities. We have MPM iftar dinner celebration. So these are the happy faces that had it at the club golf for Himatan Awam. Um, so this is the convocation for 2019. Um, very, uh, exciting and uh, they have uh, very enthusiastic students. One of the best batch, right? <laughs> this is the graduation dinner 2019 at uh, Strike Hotel. Yes, Strike Hotel. 
And this is the NPM appreciation lunch in August 2020 at Shangri-La Hotel. You can see our health department, Dr. Saipo here. And also please like our project management at UM uh, Facebook page. So you can see all the photos and activities there as well, right? Okay, I think that's all. And we are open for Q&A session if you have any questions. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. Hello, who is, who is speaking? Hey, hey. My uh, name is Lloyd. Lloyd, uh, yes. Okay, Dr. Lu, I just want to know because your program here is actually what you're saying is a full-time program. Yes. But then your classes are conducted, uh, what do you call it, after office hours. Okay, the yes. problem here is that I am a working professional, okay? So, uh, only weekends I'm available for this, uh, what do you call that, this program. Mm. So, that is what I registered for, you know. But then, since you're saying it's after office hours on the weekdays, most likely, you know, it'd be very difficult for me. So, I was just wondering whether you have any program, I mean, the same program that, you know, conducted weekend basis. You mean you cannot, you are not available after working hours? Yeah, correct. Because I don't work in KL. <laughs> uh, it's online. Oh, it's online? Yeah, yeah. The so classes are online for this uh, uh, semester. We'll be okay. having all the classes will be conducted online until December 2020. So after December okay. 2020, there'll be further notices, right? For now, for this coming semester, we... We think that it will continue in this current online mode until final exam. Yeah. Okay. What 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 happens after the the online mode is completed? So will it still go for after office hours uh, classes or will it be weekends or something like that? Yes. Yes. Because this is for uh, most of our candidates here are part timers. So I mean to say they are only free after working hour. Okay. So they'll have uh, okay. lectures online after working hour according yeah. to the schedule that I've shared just now. Yeah. So online only. Lah. So you're saying even after the, uh, what do you call that, this uh, after December also most likely it'll be online, you're saying? It depends on the official announcement by uh, the university. Uh -huh. But at the current mode, it will be online. Okay. And also the instructions from the Ministry of Education. Yeah. Uh, oh. Nobody at final exam for any exams. We there's the online or uh, physical. Uh, just now I mentioned there are several subjects with exams, final exams, yeah. so be conducted online as well. Oh, online as well. We'll be given a, uh, uh huh. Uh, I saw in your uh, schedule that yeah, you mentioned the venue. I think I saw ah. few venues there. So is it the location for exam? Oh, oh, oh the exam will be conducted online, right? The, so the, venue is, the venue is actually for classes to be held in that particular venue because why we put this is because uh, in just in case, let's say the face-to-face -face mode of the classes is uh, being resumed, we, can, we are able to conduct uh, physical classes, physical lectures, and then we will use that particular venue. But at this moment, everything will be conducted online, even up to the exam stage. So exam will be tech home exam, so you'll be submitted online. We have a platform, an online platform called Spectrum. Uh, Spectrum is a place where you get to download all the teaching materials and also the assignments you can submit there and the exam and test as well will be submitted there. Uh, discussion forums, all the information will be available in the spectrum. Uh, yes, I have um, another question. Uh, how about our supervisor for our research project? Uh, can we choose by ourselves or you will give it as, uh, I mean, uh, you will decide for us who is our supervisor? Um, Okay, okay. Uh, your question regarding the supervisors for your research project. Um, it depends on the your topic. For example, uh, I think Dr. Saipo just now he shared regard shared the background of all the department staff. So most of the staff they have their own expertise. For example, my expertise is risk management, project management. So students who are doing the topic of risk management will fall uh may be supervised by me or Dr. Saipo because his area is also risk and also value. 
and uh, some other lecturers, for example, like he mentioned Puan Masna, Madam Masna, her expertise is HR, human resource, as well as uh, strategic management, project management. So students who are uh, candidates who are doing uh, HR topics will fall under, maybe supervised by Puan Masna. So it depends on the topics that you are, uh, you are doing. Yeah. And yeah, so there's no limit for one supervisor how many students will be uh, supervised under them. Uh, normally, we have no problem with the number of students under one particular supervisor. Uh, if normally we'll be supervising three or four, two, two, three to four. It depends on. It really depends on the topic because we cannot be giving a. For example, you're doing contract and we cannot be giving uh, students doing contract under uh, lecturers whose expertise is in, for example, myself, uh, risk management, right? So it's, it's still for, depends on the topics that you cover. Hmm. And any other question? Uh, if any other doubts? Uh, oh, uh, I got another one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, okay, uh, but this one is, I think, more to administration. Uh, okay, for example, it's like, uh, we already uh, do the medical checkup and so on, so how about the result? How can we hand over the result? And also, how about the metric cards and so on? Um, this one... Um, this is a ring because uh, for us on our part here, we are actually coordinating regarding the program. So for admission and all those uh, regarding the health check and also submission for enrollment and all that, it is under a unit called uh, AASC. So that particular unit, um, we need to check the information from them and uh, I will have to refer back to our assistant registrar who is in check Mohammad. So if you don't mind, could you, uh, we will update everyone. I will ask in check Mohammad to update everyone regarding the submission of your uh, your health report and also extract your health check and all that, right? Thank you Thank for your question. Thank you. I'll take note. Uh, any other questions? Uh, hello. There's a question regarding the recorded briefing by Rosila Hassan. Uh, yeah, don't worry. This is recorded, so I will... Uh, ask the technician to upload it to our website fbe.um.edu.my and there you can uh, you can uh, take a look at the whatever that we have uh, presented just now uh, don't worry reference book um, okay okay um there's a question, right? Okay, check on the reference book or reading materials. Okay, usually uh, reference books are there in the library, right? If, if it's about book, okay? But uh, since there is no face-to-face -face classes, uh, reference books are still there in the library. You can still come to the library because library is still open. I think you have to book a session in the library if I'm not mistaken for the last batch. Uh, there is a link, there is a way that students have to book if you want to use or if you want to go to the library to study. I'm not sure about now. But um, at the moment, okay, uh, the university is actually uh, collecting all uh, reference books that is being used, particularly for uh, any subjects that is being used in the, in the, in the class. Then the university is actually looking at uh, booking on the uh, online, online book uh, copies for students, right? We are still collecting... Uh, list of reference books from the lecturers, all right? And then that will be updated to the university's library and the university's library will make it available online, right? And other than that, uh, we use uh, journals as our references. So journals are there in, 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 uh, in online that you can access, right? As long as you're a student, okay, those uh, paid journals are actually freely accessible for all students. 
So make use of the uh, databases, make use of these online journals for your references as well, right? Okay, certain subjects uh, you may be required to have your own uh, reference books, right? On certain subjects, maybe not. Okay, depends on the lecturers, depends on the subjects. Okay. Um, right. Uh, Okay, there's a question, right, uh, to complete within two semesters. No, I'm sorry, cannot because uh, it is a structured program. That is what we said, a minimum of three semesters, right? So you can complete whether it's going to be three semesters or four semesters, it depends, right? But we cannot do it in two semesters because the allocation of credit hours are actually quite heavy, right? And subjects are only offered at a certain uh, semesters, right? Uh, if you did not take this semester one, for example, uh, the mm -hmm. organizations, right? You want to uh, uh, defer it to another session, whatever, then you have to take it for next year, lah, right? But you cannot cram everything yeah. into two semesters, right? Right. Methodology mm -hmm. of. right? And and we also have prerequisite subjects, right? I think I believe uh, Dr. Anjali have explained to you just now. Okay, these three subjects, okay, 7001, Research method 702, 703, right? These are all prerequisite subjects. So you have to pass gate one zero, okay, gate one first, then you can go to, to another gate and another gate, right? So that's why we need three full semesters, right? And you can discuss with the coordinator how to plan your study, mm. right? Yeah. We have students, especially those uh, uh, full time students, right? Of, mm. of course, on full time student, government sponsored students, whatever. Okay, that is actually normally requested, uh, all sort of request to, to uh, spread the credits into four semesters, right? Uh, so you can plan for it because maximum is four semesters, you are still uh, considered as graduate on time. Okay, so plan for it. Okay, if you have problems, you can discuss with the coordinator, no worries, right? We will try to help you. But again, uh, in two semesters, is is so far, uh no such case lah, right we cannot okay uh we don't offer short semester the reason being is just short semester is very short okay instead of 14 weeks of lectures you will be having only seven weeks of lectures so efforts have to be doubled all right instead of three hours classes a day you might have to sit for six hours classes so that's why uh we do have that uh short semester last time and we receive a lot of complaints that students cannot cope with the time, right? You have to double efforts uh, in seven weeks, okay? All assignments, all uh, exams have to be done with the short period. So uh, when we did the curriculum review, we dropped that special semester because all sort of uh, issues came up, right? Okay. Uh, total fees, okay. All right, so Dr. Angela, we show you how much is it uh, tentatively for now. Remove it. Um, for the total fee of the whole program for the local students will be about uh, 16,000. Uh, I will 16 to 17,000. I will have to ask the uh, Inchat Muhammad, our assistant registrar, to upload the fee structure into the uh, the website that I mentioned just now. Yeah. Um, there's a question on whether the all the online lectures will be recorded and able to be browsed later. Um, yes, most of the uh, all the lectures will be recorded and be browsed later. But it is better for the students to join in the Zoom session or the Google Meet session to discuss with the lecturers. If you are unable to attend, then yeah, you can browse later. And, and I've mentioned just now, we have a platform called Spectrum. That is the e-learning platform for UM, the official one. And that's where you can check all the teaching materials, the recording will be uploaded there.
Um, regarding the, there's a last question regarding in the confirmation of the letter, it says that you need to pay 4,048 ringgit. Does it include tuition fee? Uh, this maybe you can you like uh I, I will need to check with Inchet Mohammad because he's the assistant registrar. I'll need to know the the figure four zero four eight, the figure right. I will ask him to send a, a clarification. Registration confirmation letter. Okay, um, one question from Lloyd just now, right? Uh, regarding the post, uh, post COVID lockdown measure, okay, after possibly after uh, December 2020, all right? So, um, we have no news yet, okay, because it depends on the instructions from the government uh, how the class should be handled, okay? All what we know at the moment is actually instructions said uh, up to end of uh, December 2020. All class classes, okay, all lectures are to be 100% online, all right? So beyond 2020, we have no um, idea of what is going to be, okay? It depends on the situation. And for your information, um, classes actually, yes, classes will be conducted. If it's, if it's allowable uh, by next year, uh, classes will be conducted face-to-face. -face. And... Uh, Arrangement can be done with the particular lecturers, okay, on how are you going to travel if you are actually outside of KL. We used to have, right, we used to have uh, students from Manjung travel every weekend, every weekdays, in fact. Okay, we used to have students from uh, Kutte Terminal, okay, also travels uh, from Kutte to KL, all right. And uh, for other program, one of our program, we have students coming from Bali every week, all right, just to attend class. And because that particular student don't mind to travel, okay, from Bali to KL every week, right? That is a, quite an extreme case, lah, right? Okay, but uh, please, uh, you can arrange first. Maybe you can arrange for certain uh, exemptions, okay? If you did not attend face to face, you may you may uh, have to fulfill some other criteria with the particular lecturer, right? We try to accommodate okay, certain cases. All right, okay. but not to be uh, going to be every week, lah. All right, try to attend maybe one week and the other week, maybe you can attend online. All right, so since online is actually the in thing now, lah. Right, so it, it can be done. Okay, it can be done, but please uh, arrange uh, in advance with a particular lecturer. All right, and for your information as well, classes during Saturdays are going to be only for semester one so far. All right, and for semester two, there is no weekend classes. Because based on our record, based on request from previous, previous all sorts of students, they need their weekends. So we accommodate to all sorts of requests, all right? Uh, semester one, you have Saturday, right? You don't have Sunday classes. You have Saturday classes, but upon uh, completing your, your, your semester one, okay, semester two onwards, there is no weekend classes anymore, right? We give you time as well. I know that you are working, you might be tired, okay, attending seven days a week, okay, event, right? Okay, uh, any more question? Right. Uh, okay, group platform, okay, Q&A, blah, 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 right. Uh, at the moment, um, we usually have our WhatsApp groups, okay, for all sort of uh, information, okay, discussion, whatever. So we don't have that yet at the moment, but I think maybe we can... We will, we will create mm -hmm. once we get the list of students uh, Numbers. The numbers yeah. because the enrollment starts on the 5th of October. So once we get the list, uh, we will create the WhatsApp group. Okay, for everyone to uh, a fast communication of the information, right? And um, yeah, I saw, I saw just now Maizali. Maizali is there. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay, 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 right. Okay, Very just good. for your for your information, eh? Okay. Uh, some of you might uh, always be uh, 
concern okay you have concern about your time okay your working timetables okay uh, bear in mind okay since uh, semester one is fully online we are not that strict lah okay okay uh, attendance okay we don't say that if you don't come you will be penalized no no such thing right so you are an adult okay you know how to manage your time and we don't simply penalize student for not attending because of your work commitment whatever right we do understand your situations but please inform the lecturer if you're not able to come just inform okay we do understand but uh, try not to uh, be absent for uh, three or four consecutive classes right that would be uh, troublesome for us as well to justify right but if you are being uh, given a task you so you accommodate with the task right we know right, right? Uh, we do have students at the age of 55 56 right we do have one uh, previous batch we do have one uh, uh, government uh, engineers right from JKR who actually retired upon completion of his masters right so he don't mind to travel right he also don't mind to be attending classes and you have all sort of age gap right from uh, pensioners level to quite uh, very young lah, one or two years experience yeah. graduate so there will be a mixture of you in the class so we try to accommodate to each other's uh, request or concern, all right? No worries, all right? So far, we are in a very good team, okay? Very harmony with your team, all right? And we do understand each other, okay? No worries, okay? Um, any, any more questions? Okay, uh, normal class after MCO, it depends again on the instructions, okay? On the circular, okay? If the Ministry of Health or Ministry of Higher Education said, yes, we can resume, then we will try to resume. But since we are quite uh, apa? Comfort, okay, comfortable with current, maybe we do a mixture, right? Hybrid between online and face-to-face, -face. it depends, right? Because uh, it's norm now, everything is online. So possible, right? That will be a mixture of classes between face-to-face -face and online, okay? Right, that will be a good thing as well. Uh, okay, I do understand that. Okay, after six pm, okay, especially those in KL, okay, traveling from anywhere in KL uh, to the university is quite troublesome, right? Most students will reach. Okay, if you travel from six uh, five fifty, you will not be able to reach here at six. Okay, I can say that unless you go out from the office quite early, right? If you go out office five to five thirty, you will be reaching UM about six forty five to seven. Okay, just come, right? We do understand, right? We don't penalize, right? Okay, I have students, okay, came to class at 8 p.m., right? And classes ended at 9, but he still come. Okay, he don't want to miss, at least he gets something and he can continue with the discussion, right? He still come at 8. Okay, we don't penalize, don't worry. Right, but again, uh, try not to do it every week, lah. Right? Okay, if you cannot come, as I said, let us know, right? We do understand, okay? Of course, okay, if you are traveling, if you have projects outside of KL, all right, you may have difficulties, okay? No worries with that, okay? We are all adults. Okay, any more question? Right, it's about 4.30 now. Any more question? Right? Oh, okay. One more. Okay, I'll just entertain one more question. Hi. Eh? Okay. Uh, need to use software. Okay. No, no particular software at the moment. Okay. If you have your Microsoft project or Primavera, just keep it to you. All right. All right. We don't really teach how to use software at this point of time. All right. Okay. If you're given a task, we are expected you at least to explore as well. Okay. Guidance are given, all right. Some software, whatever, okay. We, no, no particular software, like basically, unless uh, there is a need uh, for us to call for external people to teach a particular software, then we will assist, okay. Other than that, no, okay. All right, uh, do we need to use certain spec, laptop? No, 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 no worries, okay. We're not going to burden anyone on this particular thing, all right. What we want is your readiness to study, okay. All right. Okay. Any more question? Ada? Right. Everyone is in good. Okay. So will I be seeing you? Oh, I'm not. I'm not going to teach you in the first semester. I'll be seeing you on the second semester. 
right? When, once you are well cooked, then I'll get you in, in my class. Okay, uh, before we leave, can uh, everybody turn on your video? Okay, we'll need to capture some uh, nice faces as well. Can you do that? Okay, hang on eh. Sorry. Akimi Nadira, uh, who is this? Two two nine six two. Can you just turn on a bit? Okay. <laughs> Nadira Hakimi 22962, can you just uh, turn on your video for a while? Right, uh, waiting for Hakimi, right? <laughs> okay, eh, one, two, eh, mana? Where is Hakimi? Okay, can you smile? Smile, smile. Hong Ming, smile. Sean. Okay, and then one. One, two, smile. I don't get Hakimi and 22962. No worries lah. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank, Thank you for your time. Uh, hope you. to see you very soon online. Okay. Uh, By the way, if you want to come over, okay, you can still come over to the university. If you want to meet up, make an arrangement. We can meet up. Okay. No problem. All right. Thank you very much. Eh? Have a good day. Bye, bye. 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 B